Hi everybody. Wanted to invite you and hope you'll enjoy this new series um, I'm doing. My name is Scott Moss. Um, I'm registered in both adult and pediatric echo. I have been for about 30 years. Um, I decided to do a series on just basic adult echo. This is really for people who are just starting out in the echo field who may have gone through a course and um, would still like to keep fresh while you're looking for a job or while you're just starting a job and you can go over these videos and maybe uh, get some good information about the basics of echo. And we're going to start off with the first view in adult echo which is the long axis view. Okay so here's a pretty famous image. Um, this was done by I think Mayo Clinic many, many, many years ago, and a lot of people use it as uh, an explanation of the long axis because it shows you the anatomical cut of the long axis. So it would be like cutting the heart in half and looking at the chambers um, in a longitudinal um, cut. So from the apex to the top of the aorta is usually what you get. Um, and up in the left hand corner you can see the um, long axis view what you would see in an echocardiogram so obviously they have um, shown us where uh, the different views are or the different um, chambers are so up on top you have the RV outflow track this is the aortic valve which is right about here the LV outflow tract, which is left ventricular outflow tract. AV valve is aortic valve. RV outflow tract is just that RV outflow tract. The left ventricle, right here. The mitral valve, right here. You can see it right there. And the left atrium. Now, the left atrium is actually this chamber here. So, um, this is all drawn out here, too. You can see the left atrium, the LV left ventricle, the mitral valve, the LV outflow tract, the aortic valve as you can see here, and the aorta itself. Now most of the time in a long axis view we only see about this much of the screen so we see the aortic valve and a little bit of the ascending aorta but we won't see the whole thing. And it's the same thing with the septum, or I'm sorry, the apex. You may see about that much of it and that's it. After that, you know, it's just a matter of you, you only get so much room on the screen and you want to give them as much picture as you can, but you start to have drop out and you lose the image. So um, that's why the long axis, it's important to get it lined up right. That's one of the biggest problems that most uh, people have with uh, getting the long axis view, and I'm going to draw that for you in a second. Okay, so this is my very poor drawing of a chest, um, but I did want to show you this because what happens is a lot of people want to start up in the wrong place uh, and they end up getting an image that is not a true long axis. Now I've always told people when I was teaching that you want to start at about the second intercostal space, which would be pretty high, and then work your way down the third intercostal space. Maybe somewhere between the second and the third, or I'm sorry, either the second or the third intercostal space, you get that real true long axis view that has, you know, the, the angles are all correct and it looks nice on the screen. So let's say it looks like that. Now, if you start um, getting uh, I don't want to erase the whole thing here. Hold on a second. If you start getting too low on the sternum, let's say the fourth, fifth, even as low as the sixth intercostal space, you're going to start to see an image that looks more like this. The mitral valve here, the left atrium and the aorta kind of sticking up here and then you'll see a bit of the RV here and this will be your the way the image looks on the echo machine 
that is probably more frustrating to a cardiologist than anything so avoid this image as much as you possibly can this is a sign that you haven't tried hard enough to get the picture up near the second intercostal space or the third intercostal space don't just drop down here and you know say hey I got it truth is you don't have it you have a modified view that you would only use in the cases of maybe someone who's got emphysema or is a heavy smoker and you can't get a view in these intercostal spaces so you end up going lower and you end up getting at a view like this and it's all you can give the doctor and that's if all you can give him is that then it's okay but obviously you want something good oh by the way every person that you do a echo on should be on their left side um, sometimes that's impossible if you're doing an echo in the ICU and the patient's on a ventilator and they're unresponsive why do they need an echo that's all that's my opinion but anyhow um, if that's the case then you have to do it with them laying flat and the pictures probably will not be as good but in most cases if you can get them over on their left side the image quality will be much better okay let's step into the world of M mode which in a lot of places isn't used anymore but I want to cover it because in a good portion of the places it's still used um, its accuracy has been questioned in some articles and other articles it's still considered to be the gold standard for measurements so um, we're going to go over it real quick just to show you. Um, so in an M mode picture, the area that you're looking at mainly is, in this picture, is the left ventricle. And you can see that when I draw this line that the ventricle contracts, contracts there, and then it would continue to, like down here it contracts, it contracts, and then up here it would contract. Now this is the difference between diastole and systole. So those are the two areas that we're interested in measuring. Now the machine will do most of the calculations for you, so I'm not going to go through that. I just want you to know where to measure. Now each one of these will show you exactly where to measure it. So if you have to pause the, um, the video here to, to take a look at it, go ahead. This is a good video of you where you'd measure the IVS, the interventricular septum, right here, and then the LV, which is here to here, and then the posterior wall, which is there to there, and then the, sorry, someone wants me, and then the um, ventricular uh, body in systole. That's usually all they have you measure. Years ago, we used to have to measure the IVS in systole and the LV posterior wall in systole, but now they don't have you do it much. Those measurements are important. If we put them directly into the computer, it'll calculate a fractional shortening. It'll calculate an ejection fraction based on M mode, which is not always accurate, but it's sometimes looked at pretty hard. So this is an M mode of the LV and it is important to kind of know how to do the measurements on here so do some further research but I gave you a basic on that okay I just wanted to show you long axis of the mitral valve they'll ask you to do this too if it's a lab where they have M mode as a you know property of a regular echo so um, in the long axis uh, M mode of the mitral valve really all you're looking at is the motion of the mitral valve and you have although it's hard to see here this is the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve and then it closes there then it opens again and you can barely see the posterior leaflet the posterior leaflet's kind of hard to see unless you have the absolute beautiful picture of it um, so it's a nice image just to get to show them that the mitral valve is opening and closing well. Um, sometimes if you have mitral valve prolapse you'll see the posterior leaflet go like that and then it'll go back up into the M. So um, if you do see that obviously that's something that you want to show them just to show them how 
talented you are that you got the posterior leaflet to buckle down like that. Anyhow, that's uh, M mode of the mitral valve. Okay, and the last section of uh, the M mode that we usually get is of the aorta. And that shows us the aortic valve opening, which you can see on this one right here. So it's closed here, and then it opens like this. And then you can't see the closure here, but it's probably right about there. And then this closed until it gets to the opening again. And the same thing here, you can see the leaflets opening and then probably closing here and then it's closed all the way down to there. So you take a measurement of the aorta in systole right about here. You want to start at the leading edge, that's what I was taught. So the first edge that you see and then the first edge that you see down here and then the first edge that you see in the left atrium and the first edge you see at the bottom of the atrium. And those measurements, they put them on the screen up here and it also goes into the calculation package. Um, in most cases what I was taught was that you want to see this almost in thirds. So one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. I guess I made this one a little bit big. So. The reason why you want to see that is because if you see it in thirds and they're all about the same size, then you know that there's no aortic enlargement or left atrial enlargement. Most of the time what you would see would you you'd see an aorta like this and then a very large left atrium. So then obviously this wouldn't be two thirds. This would be or three thirds or whatever. One you know, one third, one third, one third the left atrium is much bigger. So that's one of the reasons why they have you look at it like that, just to make sure that you can determine that there is no real uh, dilation of the aortic, or I'm sorry, of the left atrium. All right, we're going to do one more thing, and then we're going to close out this session. And the next session will be on some of the pathology that you see in the long axis view, so some of the unusual stuff that we see. I just wanted to show you that if you're going to do 2D measurements, so if you're going to measure the heart here in the long axis view without using M mode, there's a specific way to do it. Most people do not measure the RV. Um, it's just not considered that accurate, and besides, you're really measuring the RV outflow track, not the RV itself. So the measurements will start at the inner ventricular septum. So this is a measurement right here. So that's the size of the inner ventricular septum. And then this will be a measurement of the LV right here. And then this is a measurement of the posterior wall. And then, so here's your cursor going down. Sorry, I made it a little thick. And then your next time you move the cursor, you'd be through the, I'm sorry, I should have drawn that, through the mitral valve leaflets. So that should have been down a little bit further, but um, that will show you that nice looking M of the mitral valve flow or the mitral valve movement. So um, you do that, and then your last M mode would go right through the aortic leaflets and the left atrium. So that will show them the size of the left atrium and the size or the movement of the aortic valve. So these are all the 2D M. I'm sorry, we're we're doing the 2D measurements. So the last measurement would be the aorta, which would be from here to here, and then the left atrium would be from there to here. So those are your 2D measurements. Now occasionally someone will want you to measure the ascending aorta. Um, there are some calculations they can do with that. Uh, it's also important if you see that the aorta is dilated, then you want to definitely do that. And then, of course, you're going to do the same measurements for the LV during systole. So this is uh, an image that looks like it's supposed to be like the beginning of diastole or the end of diastole. I'm not sure. So there's no, and there's no EKG on it, so it's hard to tell. But um, that's where you're going to use your M or your 2D to image or to, I'm sorry, to measure things. It's still early here. So, um, 
I think we'll end it here, and then the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do on uh, some of the pathology that you see in the long axis view. Have a great day.